Hail and welcome. Today is November 11th, 2017, and I'm at St. Anthony's Cemetery, which is just outside of Mount Pleasant here in Edmonton. And uh, tonight is the night of the Einherjahr. So it's just about 5 o'clock, and the sun is setting. It is now dusk, day is done. And as we're in the twilight of the day, I want to reflect on the twilight of these lives who gave the ultimate sacrifice. So this is Private Charles Vincent Crow wiping off Charles's grave. Place a coin here. Buy you a drink, Charles. Down here, I can see somebody has left a poppy and a flag. So, Charles Crow, you are remembered. And now I'm at Private Nate Campbell's grave. Again, there's a rose, and there, deep in here, there's a poppy. And at this moment, I'd like to uh, honor one of my ancestors. Otto Schmaltzbar was born on September 14, 1865. He had just graduated from trade school for butchering. A, a tattoo of a cleaver and a knife is on his upper arm documenting his trade, a custom of European countries. He dutifully registered with the army at the age of 18. In 1883, he was called upon to serve his country. And when he took on the life of a soldier, while under the leadership of a malicious captain, Otto opposed the extreme cruelty rendered to his fellow soldiers. And in defending his principles, he became embroiled in a bitter fight with the authorities. We knew he don't, could not remain in Germany, for he would be punished or possibly executed for his confrontations. At this point, he contacted his brothers, and his brothers were uh, going through a, a timber falling, cutting down trees for extra money. And they met him, they brought him a change of clothes, and he dumped his old clothes in an outhouse, and he decided he was going to go to North America. He settled in Minnesota, and then he made arrangements for two other brothers to come to North America. And that's how the Schmaltzbar line wound out in North America. Hail Otto Schmaltzbar. May your name live on. A few steps away, I find the grave of Private Patrick McManus. And once again, we can see that there's a, a flag, a rose. And over here, another poppy. Private Patrick McManus, you are remembered. This is Albert Gill's uh, headstone and you know if you look here at the top the ravens have marked this one there's little bird footprints all over the top and this tombstone belongs to Albert Gill a able seaman of the Royal Navy so I'm losing my lighting now but I'm in a section pretty close to the the center north-south of Mount Pleasant, about halfway up the hill. And in this section, a lot of the graves are in the last 30 days of World War I. These are the guys who fought the final decisive battles of World War I. Uh, some of these people may have got injured and died shortly after the war was over. Uh, but these here are dated from October 
1918 to November 1918, the graves in this section. Hail the Einherjar. Odin was often known as a god of war, but he's also known as a god of poetry. So, I'd like to read one of the most commonly recited poems here on the 11th of November. It's called In Flanders Fields, and it was written, written by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, sought sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Another, I'm going to say one of two verses, probably the most cliche verses out there, but this is a time when I feel they're appropriate. Cattle die, kinsmen die, someday you too shall die. But I know one thing that'll never die the reputation of a man who's earned it with honor. Hail the Iron Herd. At the top of the hill, near Hillside Gardens, there's a tombstone array from the rest. And this tombstone belongs to a man who served with the South African Army, I believe. This stone here Hard to see in the dark. This is George Reeve, who was a trooper with the CMR of South Africa. So what I do now, I mean with all due, all due respect, there was a tradition in the German army, and Einherjart is for not just the Allies, but all of the war dead. And they used to drink out of a boot. In Oktoberfest, we honor that tradition. October is past, but still. To the Einherjar, and to the gods of war. To Odin, to Tyr, to Thor, to Freya. The first drink I offered to the war dead. I offer a drink to Odin. offer a drink to Freya. I offer a drink to Tyr. I offer a drink to Thor, the protector. I offer the drink to my ancestors. And I join them with this last swallow. Again, I mean no disrespect. No, no disrespect. And this here... I'm drinking apple juice, not beer, it's not alcohol or beverage. This apples are sacred to Edun. Edun's apples grant immortality. And I've been going around tonight saying the names out loud of the war dead, hoping to grant them a small bit of immortality. So with Edun's blessing, may your names live on.